Welcome to Window to Hollywood, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us again. Uh, I'm Joseph Perlman. Uh, this is Eugene Nomura. Hello. <laughs> and we're here with our very special guest, Scott Takeda. Uh, oh. Scott, thank you for, oh. for hanging out with us uh, Thanks today. Thanks for having me. Emmy winning actor, also a writer and a producer. And uh, the proof is right behind him. <laughs> anyway. uh, te technically, uh, Emmy winning uh, director, not Emmy winning actor. But, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. So, anyway. uh, cool. Yeah, so thank you for hanging out with us and doing this. And um, Sure. I know I am, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm outside of L.A. right now, but it looks like I'm where I usually am. And uh, yeah, so congratulations. Um, can you talk, can you, do you mind talking a little bit about what you've just finished up uh, or where or where you're at right now or I have no idea I've got no idea um I, it's um yeah so um if you want to we have other yeah things. so yeah so we, we we just finished um as I said uh, now probably about 46 minutes ago uh but just put the final period in the first draft again yeah. there are only oh, many wow. drafts of our screenplay, feature screenplay, Remembering Us. Um, so in 2016, I had a traumatic brain injury. And um, so my wife and I um, suddenly had different titles. Instead of husband and wife, it was patient and caregiver. And so um, the only thing that could treat the uh, debilitating symptoms was uh, medical cannabis. And I um, I was one of Nancy Reagan's just say no kids. So it was um, it was a, quite a bit of leap. And there's there's when we do our films, we we explore um, general themes. And so the one that we wanted to explore this time is is shame. And stigma. Speaking of something very Japanese, shame. <laughs> shame. So Japanese. <laughs> very Japanese. Um, I'm learning. So, I'm a student. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So that's one of the things that we were exploring. And so, what's unique about a traumatic brain injury is, as we, as we've done research about it, um, there's actually more traumatic brain injuries every year than there are cancers. Um, more. more let me be very specific. There's a lot more than cancers. There are um, more reported moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries than cancers because people may hit their head and not go into any kind of medical establishment where it can yeah. be recorded. So, you know, one in three people get cancers. So, but you, and you hear that but you don't hear people talk about traumatic brain injuries. So there is this enormous stigma and shame about having one and revealing that you have one because it's kind of a hidden disability. Yeah. So in, in 2018, uh, we spent the entire year shooting a 35 min, uh, minute short film. And um, so we are now diving into the feature, turning that into a feature. So yeah, just, wow. just put, the, the last period on the first draft as we expand this into a feature. So that's what we've been doing. And um, yeah, just nonstop, nonstop. How do you feel right now? How does it feel for you? I mean, I congratulations, but does it feel like a congratulations? Like how, how are you personally feeling about it? Oh, it's a great question. Um, I, you know, honestly, it's so fresh. I don't know if I have had a chance to slow down to really embody right now to yeah. <laughs> check in with my feelings. Yeah. Um, it's, it's exciting. Why? Let me just kind of check in. You're getting live in the moment. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm an acting coach. So assessment. <laughs> so it is, um, a little bit of sorrow actually, to be honest. Mm. Um, this has been quite the journey. It wow. has been, um, it's been quite the journey to actually go through and it's been quite the journey to, um, put your life out there as an art form because our goal is to start the conversation. 
because in the 70s, um, early 70s, um, you know, people wouldn't say cancer. And it took some very, very brave people to come forward and say, hey, you know what, this is, this is a national emergency here. This is a world emergency here. Um, and, and people need to talk about it. Otherwise, you know, people are, are going to die. And so I know in the age of a pandemic, it seems strange to talk about um, something like traumatic brain injuries um, when everyone else is thinking about, you know, should I wear a mask, should I not wear a mask? But um, at the end of the day, um, one day in the future, this, this COVID pandemic will be over. But st yeah. still, people are going to be walking on the streets. You know, in our film, our main character gets a traumatic brain injury slipping on ice while walking the dog. It's not, you, you don't have to be in any level of sports or contact whatsoever to get this. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess sorrow is, is right beneath the surface because it, it has been um, really difficult to go through and really difficult to experience the first time when we made this short film and then to re-experience this, this pain again um, while putting it on page in a much uh, larger format. Yeah. What does, um, is it one of those things like what, what, what can one do? I mean, is there any prevention or is it more about sort of mitigating what happens once you have it? Is that like, hmm. I, um, I have a relative who's an Alzheimer's researcher and it's about, I think you said something about, well, everybody gets it if they live to a certain age. How can we keep it from maybe, how can we sort of fend it off a little bit or how does that... Yeah. Uh, okay, so I that's a great question. Um, I don't know if I have the medical background to, to to even discuss that. I think the one thing that I can say is it is um, an incredibly isolating feeling when you have a hidden disability. And I think, you know, some people who have gone through mental illness have said, oh my gosh, it sounds just like mental illness. And it's like, yeah, you, you, you are living your life in kind of this closeted world yeah. where you are so scared of being discovered because there can be societal and economic consequences if people know this stuff. And so I think one of the things that I would, that we're aiming to do is we're trying to get as many eyeballs on this project somewhere in the future as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so we can start just to start the conversation about it. So I don't know if there's anything to keep you from getting a traumatic brain injury because mm -hmm. we have to live our lives. Right. I'm sure even in this, even in the time period when we were the most shut down for this COVID uh, situation people were still getting traumatic brain injuries because they're walking up and down stairs or tripping on a cat you know their right. cat like you know runs across and right. you, you, just something happens or something falls down and you know you're you're cleaning out the closet and something falls down and hits your head yeah so I don't know unless we're, we're walking around wearing helmets all the time I don't know if you, if you can prevent this but I think what I love for it is if it happens people understand oh my gosh okay and then also understand that it's it's it, you know we have I think two go tos reactions to traumatic brain injuries. One is oh my god you know uh, are they are they going to live? Right. <laughs> you know so it's the, on one end on the spectrum it's it's really horrible, and on the other end of the spectrum it's like ah oh, you just got your bell run and shake it off. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that's in the middle. And the majority of the folks that get traumatic brain injuries are somewhere in the middle where there's a, there's a new normal that happens afterwards. Yeah. Um, and that whatever was before is no longer. I think cumulatively as a world, we're starting to understand what that is. Yeah. And so in a very, very real sense, that is what it's like for one third of the population. And their caregivers, which they'll you know, start getting into the majority of the population. Yeah. 
I mean, I just know a very basic thing. I am pretty shocked, and my daughter always calls it out now too, at the lack of people wearing helmets on any kind of device, whether it's scooter, <laughs> oh whether it's like, it is pretty shocking, skateboarding, scootering. So, yeah. I mean, again, I don't, yeah. I'm, I'm new to all this, and, 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 and you've put it on my radar during our last conversation. I would imagine that that would make a, quite a bit of a difference. It's just, it, I'm, I'm actually surprised at how much yeah. that's not talked about. Kids yeah. not wearing the helmets and all that. Anyway. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, one of the things that we, honestly, I, I slipped on hardwood floors, just, you know, the next room over. Um, but, you know, we, we, we tried to, for movie purposes, you know, uh, make it less <laughs> gangly and awkward. <laughs> so we, 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 we have the main character walking the dog and slipping on ice. Okay. Um, okay. You know, as opposed to just being, you know, awkward and slipping. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, on hardwood floors. Right. So, yeah. So you know, whatever. But yeah, it's it, there's not much you can do. Uh, though, if you are in some lo- level of sports, as you said, you should wear a helmet. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Eugene, I was. Well, first of all, Scott, thank you again for coming to watch the work. Um, Appreciate that. In my class a, a while ago, and it's been. Just Teo's wonderful and continue to sort of enjoy working with her every week. And, um, and we had a, and I was telling Eugene about this, but I, I greatly enjoyed our conversation we had whenever we had it uh, recently. It was just, it was like a surprise. It was just, yeah. a su- it was just a fun surprise. I didn't know what we were going to talk about really. Um, I thought it was going to be one thing and then we started talking about a whole bunch of other things. But um, I think, one of the things that was fun for me in thinking about doing this is that I feel like we believe similar things. Um, sure. If you could, and, and Eugene too, feel free to please, please jump in. I don't want to mm-hmm. monopolize. No, no, this, Eugene. Love- no, this, this is my show. So stay away, Eugene. <laughs> this is all me. <laughs> um, it's all you. Just to kind of like bring us all up to speed. I mean, is there, one question is sort of like, what do you believe? What gets you up in the morning? Um, and, and like, what's fun for you about this? I think Teo had said in class and I brought her up because she said, Joseph, I do this because it's, I get high at acting. It's like a drug. Is that wrong? And I'm like, whoa, that's mm-hmm. like, that's more, that's like right to the point. I think that's what a lot of us feel, but we don't have the courage to say it. But what's fun for you? What gets you up in the morning? What do you, what do you love about this? Um, you're asking that question to me at a very, very interesting time. So, um... <laughs> Meaning, uh, the thing that got me up in the morning is sheer terror. It's like, you set a goal. It's like, this has yeah. got to get done. This has got to get done. Yeah. Um, I mean, I want so, to know, unless it's the question. I mean, I want to know what, what, you're, what you're feeling. Yeah. At the very heart of things, I'm, I'm a storyteller. And I think that there is a very... Um, storytelling is this very noble... Um, I don't want to say the word profession because you don't need to be a earning an income to do this. It's this very noble um, part of who we are. And I think it helps to define us as humans because the very nature of storytelling is to, to express to people that, you know, this happened to me and you're not alone. I mean, that's kind of what we were just talking about with this film is, is, is to, to raise awareness and start the conversation because there's conservatively one third of the population out there living very alone yeah. and isolated um, because of shame. And so I think that's part of what I do. It's not necessarily, I love the idea of it being a high. <laughs> I almost think for me it is um, this is just how my I'm I'm wired um, and and I, I I you know I'm also a visual storyteller so um, you know before if I if I could turn the camera around you would see all these photos that I've taken um, so you know I started out as as a photojournalist and you know started learning how to tell photos yeah. stories excuse me with one image. Feel free and to turn so, the camera around if you want to. I mean, there's no, there's no yeah. rules to this. I mean, for real, no if you rules want to, whatsoever. it would be it, 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 a well, joy okay. to see it. Um, it's your show. It's your show. 
Oh boy. I don't have an uh, agenda. I don't think we have an agenda. We're just, hang, we're just hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Hang on. Um, <laughs> well, let, let, let me continue the story though. Sure. Um, yes. So, so, to, to, so to be in this um, medium where um, we're telling stories not at, in with one frame, but with 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second if it happens to be film, is is kind of this wonderful luxury and you know i remember back in the time when we had, we had motor drives on our cameras and you know it's like oh my gosh i can shoot four frames per second and and to suddenly have 30 frames per second at your disposal is um really kind of empowering and and so for me i think that's what gets me up is because i think there is this need to express and release our humanity on almost like breathing, you know, inhale and exhale. We need to let people know, hey, this is my perspective. What is your perspective? And then maybe between that, we can find some commonality. Yeah. And, and so that's, I think, what gets me up in the morning because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> yeah. is, yeah. it, is it about people being witness to your perspective? Or is it about sharing things with people who believe what you believe or who, who you think may have a common perspective? Because I, I, I do personally take a great deal of joy in sort of, you know, having wow. people witness something, like see something that they may not have seen before. Yeah, just, what do you think? Uh, do, 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 do. That's a great question. I. I don't know if it's necessarily to have people witness my perspective. Um, you know, one of these Emmys that we have, actually this is one right over here, mm -hmm. um, we got for doing um, a series of documentaries on stage four cancer patients. Mm -hmm. Something was not my story. Um, and it's it's interesting when you, you you explore life from the the perspective of a stage four cancer patient um what the meaning and definition of time really is and so you know if if you could create a a special drug for them that gives them 30 extra days quality days to spend with their family what does that mean yeah you know what would you do during this time? Some very kind of deep meditative thought process that yeah. has nothing to do with me. It just yeah. happens to be the, the story angle that we took with this. And so I don't necessarily feel like it has to be from my perspective. Certainly the, the, the film that we are, are, have just finished the screenplay for, that is from the patient and caregiver perspective of the TVI. My, my, my lovely bride and I are co-writers on this. Um, but I don't know, I, I think the one thing being a former journalist that I think is interesting is what's there in front of your face every single day and you walk by it and you don't even see it or recognize it or understand it. Yeah. The untold story I think is more interesting to me maybe um and i think perhaps that's what the stories that i like telling is the stuff that's right in front of you i know there are some lovely stories out there about some yeah. lightsabers and wookies and you know you know x-wing <laughs> fighters and jedi knights and those are lovely yeah. stories too yeah, totally um and 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 love that kind of stuff um i right. think for me, uh, I think it is, it's my news background and my journalist background. I like finding the stories that are right around us yeah. and no one's talking about. Yeah. Two things you brought up which were really cool are the um, topic of time, which we talk about, Eugene and I, um, we, Eugene, we've talked about a lot in this series, just time. And then also in the work that I do, strange things kind of happen with time and then one thing that I always find to be very interesting that's right around us all the time that people don't maybe realize is I always think the power of the spoken word, like speaking things out loud and, and, and thinking things versus speaking things. So just, just thinking of things that are sort of 
in the, in the work that I do is like, what are we doing all the time, but maybe you're not aware of, and it's like talking in an emotional way. So yes. that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, wow, there's, you brought up so much stuff that I could just kind of dip into. Well, this is why this, I knew this was going to be fun. Cause this is like, <laughs> we just went down the rabbit hole. of. We're, st- we're starting to go deep guys. Um, so. uh, cut. Okay. Thank you guys. We're, we're out now. Okay. And wrap. And we'll Scene. see you next time. We're going too deep here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm working with an energy person and, and she said at the beginning of the year that this is the year that, that the physical meets spiritual. And, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in, in manifestation and in, 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 in the concept of creation. And I believe that everyone is magical. And I believe so much of it b- b- boils down to personal thought. Because everything, when the t- from the time period you, 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 you come out of the womb, everything is impossible until you decide it is not. <laughs> And so the, 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 the story I, I give is, you know, imagine when you are like four years old and, and you're watching some adult, it, it could be your mother, father, big brother, sister, aunt, grandparent, whoever, um, you know, making breakfast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a four-year-old, that's impossible. What, what, what that adult is doing is they are somehow maneuvering things, food objects over a hot stove and, you know, lathering it with jam and jelly and all that stuff. And they're giving you this dish that's nourishment that keeps you alive. And that's impossible. You know, you you cannot possibly imagine doing that. And so at one point during that time period, maybe eight, maybe six, who knows, you know, maybe you're given the chance to put toast, you know, a little bread in the toaster, you know? <laughs> and so you start breaking down this concept of what is impossible and what is possible. And at a certain point, and that's what I think teachers and coaches and do is they, they imbue other people with the belief that you can do this. And maybe it, it, a person may have that naturally within them, but it doesn't matter. Somehow you imbue yourself with the idea that I can turn bread into toast. Or I can put bread and then cheese and then bread and then put it on the thing and I have grilled cheese. <laughs> yeah. Which I just made. Um, and, and so <laughs> at, at a certain point, a, a light bulb clicks, you decide it is not, not impossible. Yeah. And mm. it becomes possible. And so, so much of what you were talking about, like talking, the, the, the stories that we tell ourselves, either because it is something that has happened in the past, yeah. or it is something that we've seen and we choose to say this over and over and over, like, I'm, I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid. Well, guess yeah. what? Congratulations, you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have, you have manifested this. You have, you have, you have stated it aloud. You have imbued it with energy, emotion, and you've repeated it. So congratulations, it is now true. Right. Yeah. Ta-da. Right. Manifested it. Yeah. And so, so much of what I think a coach or a teacher does is it helps A, to either place new stories within a person's mm-hmm. belief field, <clears throat> or helps them hopefully break old yeah stories and and maybe place new ones before them and so the the one thing that i'm always trying to be very conscious of myself are is is am i placing any ints into my energy field can't won't shouldn't couldn't Mm. you know anything with the word no in it and because if i am then I'm, i'm 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 giving myself false stories Stories that just are not true. Yeah. And so when you start talking about the the spoken word, there's an enormous amount of power behind it. Or even just the thoughts. 
that we place behind it. and especially if you put emotion in it then you then you're creating you're blending the spiritual and the physical you're bringing that spiritual thought process in and in, in, in empowering it with emotional power that comes from the body yeah. and the heart so you if i mentioned this last time at the writer uh yuval noah harari who wrote sapiens um in a lecture talked about it's a good thing talking about one of the greatest skills that one can have this was before the pandemic was adaptability which i thought was brilliant mm -hmm. and then to be very careful with stories uh, especially stories that involve suffering are very dangerous. Um, the stories sure. that we tell, and um, I love that quote. I was did a video recently for Backstage about sort of mind viruses and the myths and the things that we tell ourselves, and there's some deeply ingrained stuff that, yeah, the, the audience, the actors I speak to, they tell, or tell themselves about the industry. But, um, yeah, stories of suffering are... Uh, really powerful. It's hard to get people out of that. And you know, starting to speak in, in, in the realm of, of Japanese, and mind you, I don't know what I'm talking about here, <laughs> but I, I believe like the, the Hindu and the Buddhist philosophy talk about, you know, this endless cycle of rebirth and, and this endless cycle of suffering. And, and so you can kind of see, at least on a mathematical, spiritual level, how this cycle of suffering continues if we continue to tell ourselves stories um, that perpetuate suffering and it's understandable I think why we go through this um, because you know when you are three and you're told something you, you know it's like this big being in front of me that gives me breakfast in the morning so helps me nourish and sustain myself is telling me that you know I'm just no good or you know why don't you think and so you know what am I to do except for to listen to that so it's it's I think it's understandable it's um, but the thing about it is you have you at every moment in time you have this little magical power to choose mm -hmm. and so I think if you're ever in a situation where you're stuck um, one of the best verbs to place before you is besides I am but is I choose I choose to change I choose to um, believe something else I have the inclination to start writing some notes because of the awesome things that you're saying but I don't have to write notes because we're we're recording this <laughs> I can watch cool. it back. I get to why. Yeah, I think it's so yeah. cool. No, I, this conversation made me remind. I remember my PE teacher. Okay. Um, this is elementary school, and he used to hold me, hold my head and my legs up, and he would just hold me up like this. Wow. And <laughs> yeah, um, and he was. I think he still teaches gymnastics in that way, but oh, wow. it's, it's, I can, and if you say can't, you would have to do 10 push-ups. Sure. But he was the best teacher ever. I re I still love him. And then I was, uh, when I was trying to raise funds and whatever, and I was doing meetings at different places and I was introduced to this, this head of this one organization. And then I was talking to this guy, and he was like, you know, um, where'd you go to school? And I was like, oh, I went to this school in Tokyo called uh, ASIJ. It's an American school in Japan. And he was like, when, when were you there? And I was like, uh, from about, what, 78 to 80-something? And he was like, didn't you have a PE teacher there? I'm like, yeah, we had a good PE teacher. Uh -huh. He was this big black dude, very nice and very nice, and he taught me a lot of good things. He's like, what's his name? I'm like, Mr. Lee. Well, you know what my name is? I'm like, no. No way. And it was him. <laughs> it was oh, uh, wow. Lance Lee. It was him. And he was like, I'm like, oh my God, Mr. Lee. I mean, it, he was everybody's favorite. And he's he's still working. And, you know, and he's That's has awesome. his. Yeah. But his, his motto is always, I can. So it was yeah. like, if you give up, you feel bad, you know, if, if yeah. you. If you say you can't, or you have that negativity in you, and but as you know with the Japanese like um, culture, there's a lot of that. 
It's like you shouldn't do it this way, or you have to say this to a this caliber person, or you know, you have twenty ways to say you. Like so, it's like you know, you like if you're the same age, it's like you. But if he's one, or you know, her is, if it's a she, there's a different way to say you. If it's one, you know, one ear above you, you have to say ah oh, you. You know, there's like, but we have words for this, and so it's sure. like. That was a lot of um, a lot of things I went through as a kid because I was brought up in the U.S. type, you know, way, um, and we would always get um, all these Japanese schools that would kind of surround us and start throwing rocks at us. So we would get in fights with Japanese schools, and <laughs> it was crazy. But but we was we're always in that positive, you know. I can, and we can. Yeah. No, we can be friends. We can do yeah. this. We can do that. But most of the time, I'd be like, no, you shouldn't do it that way. Or, And I, I had the experience of going to a Japanese school, and that's when I was like, wow, this is completely different. Um, yeah. A lot of sh- shouldn'ts, couldn'ts, don'ts. <laughs> and, you know, it was kind of yeah. like the military, I guess, in a way. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, almost a... Um, it, strange enough, it's, it's been fascinating how much improv has had a, a impact on me because I, I you know I, I i was telling joseph this i'm a banana so um you know grew up in a small town and and so um when you're talking about all the different yous in in japanese it's like oh i didn't know that that's fascinating wow. <laughs> um but um but yeah it's 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 been um Boy, I just kind of went down the rabbit hole there and just completely lost the track of thought. But it's like, um, uh, da, 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 da. I lost it. It was, it was <laughs> the, uh, was saying something about the banana thing you were talking about with me. And, um, yeah, I was just. We could rewind the tape. We could mm-hmm. rewind, we could rewind yeah. the tape. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about what is it with, I, I was trying to communicate this to, uh, the actors. Okay, so. How you feel is what you get. You know, your, your words create your reality. They create it in the moment as we're building the character. They create it in your lives. But when you, you add the emotions to the words, it's almost like it, it, it adds another element of magic to it. You were talking about magic. Yeah. There's this element of magic to all of us. Sometimes I, I, I kind of like some insight into, sometimes I feel like it creates your reality faster or it kind of just, it, it wormholes you right in. I don't know, something about adding the emotion to it because sometimes, you know, I can really make myself crazy about the words I say or I really try to catch myself or if I, um, I was doing, uh, a, a McGill University invited me to work with some of their doctors at the internet, this master's in healthcare and leadership program. And um, I was working with a World Health Organization team and coaching them in preparation for a meeting with the Taliban, which was crazy. And then I was working, th- yeah, it was wild. It was a life or death type of situation. I came back to acting and it was all easy after that because there was no life <laughs> or death. Um, oh, and then I, I was like, I said something, I said, gee, damn, okay? I said that God, you know, I said that word and and I, I don't think I said it, but one of the people I was working with said it. And um, I think a couple, of, I heard during the break that a couple of the the Saudi doctors that were there were very uncomfortable. It was something that was, mm. something was very, okay, the, so the power of that word um, was hurtful to them. And so I had to talk about that and it was a big learning experience for me. And, um, and, I, and I totally saw their point. You know, I, when I'm working with the actors, I, I tell the actors, don't be afraid to be offensive in your exploration. But we've talked about this a great deal, especially in the last couple of weeks, um, as we've come through a lot of uh, through the protests and the, and, uh, the George Floyd um, killing and that there's certain things. So I catch myself now too. Like if I, I would say that word, that G damn word, and I don't anymore, I feel like there's a lot of power in there. So I always, if I do, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more, I'm not overly careful, but there's some words that I am, um, I catch myself. So I, I'm, I, I learn quite a deal. Scott, I guess the question I got off on a tangent is adding emotion to spoken words. What does that do? What do you think that does? Um, 
I, I, um, I created this class called Acting As If. It's basically a manifestation class. And I, I had this idea of that, um, you know, we, we, we talk about, well, Christianity talks about the Trinity. Um, and I think, you know, there's something about the idea of mind, body, spirit, spirit, mind, body, spirit, mind, body. And, and so I, 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 I I liken it to the idea that, you know, imagine that the universe is like this open sesame magic thing. And that whatever you, you, you broadcast out to there, uh, you attract. Um, and, but let's just say that your, your, your antenna is misaligned. So let's just think, hey, I... You know, my spirit says, uh, this is what I choose to create. Um, I have trained my brain to say these words, but I'm either not putting it into the physical form or an emotional, I'm not embodying it. Mm -hmm. Or there is at some level a deep um, disbelief in that. So what you are essentially sending out to the universe is this yes, no, um, signal and so you what you kind of get is stasis nothing happens and so what i what i believe embodying the message with emotion does is it aligns everything uh so you send out a very clean clear signal cool um and and that helps to get the gears of the universe moving. Um, I guess I don't know what else to say with that. It, it's it's this this again. It is about. I'll, t I'll I'll take a different approach to this. Like there are there are goals that I have out there, and I I, I take a look at well how how does anything get done in this world? Uh, we need to build uh, a, a a bridge. Okay, great. So you start with, you know, what are the specs? How many, you know, how many cars does it need to hold? You know, who, who you know, what, what, what span does it need to go? You know, all this kind of stuff like that. Where does it need to be placed? Uh, how long does it need to last? So you start with the end in place, you know, and then you create this blueprint. And then from the blueprint, you, you get all the different you know, we need this kind of supplies. It's going to take this long, to, this many people to do. And then you get this budget, then you can go to city council and then they can say, yay, $13 million. And then we get the sixth street bridge created. And so anything that you look at out there from this tennis ball to this timer to the shirt started with this, started with the end first. What is it that we choose to create? So I feel like it's no different if we are looking to uh, bring a feature film to market from nothing to, um, hey, I'd like to be a series regular or, hey, <laughs> it'd be really nice to get my college education. Yeah. Or, hey, it'd be really awesome to be in a healthy relationship you know you start with the end result in place and then you start also living a little bit for lack because there's no such thing as time you start living a little bit in that world what does this world look like what does yeah. this world feel like you know and and i had a, a coach once teach me it's like don't make it too saccharine sweet because the brain will go, well, that, that does not sound right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's like, give yourself, I don't know, acne. Um, you know, give mm -hmm. yourself a really bad haircut. My roots are showing. I don't know, there's a pandemic happening. I don't know, give me, you know, it's like imbue yeah. this thing with reality here, but yeah. just imbue it with this, I'm there and what do I feel? Yes. What do I feel? 
And I, there's something about that when you can, if you can see yourself on set and what is it really like being on set and what does it really like feel on set and how does it feel to do that, that somehow kind of closes this gap yeah. between what is, you know, this is where I'm at and this is where I'm at. And somehow the emotion starts pulling this together so the gap is smaller. Yeah, I remember we were, we were having this conversation about what's sort of, because of what's going on now, this A to B uh, can be a lot smaller. And yeah, one of the, one of the, um, I sent you a couple Neville Goddard videos and what I particularly love about what Neville Goddard talks about is the living in the end, is living in the end. And there was a really cool exercise that some of Neville's, Neville Goddard, who I, I we could have a whole thing on who or what Neville Goddard is, but an exercise um, is taking, having a starting bias as if somebody asked you, working as if you already have what you want. And then as if somebody asked you, hey, Scott, hey, Eugene, how did you get that? And then answering it from a starting bias that you already have it. And it's, um, it reminds me of that uh, Einstein quote that I so love is you can't, you can't solve a problem using the same level of consciousness that created it. And what a cool way to leave the level of consciousness of really wanting, really wanting, because if you're really wanting on set or you're really wanting relationship, you're gonna be in that emotional state of wanting that versus, but I, I really like that little exercise of you have it, now how did you get it? And then the things that you're gonna to start to talk about are the are the most important things. It's not the meaningless shit that, you know, you were supposed to do this and you were supposed to cross that T and all that. So I, I like that exercise and I am, um, I'm really excited by this kind of conversation about the, the living yeah. in the end and feeling into the end is so powerful. Yeah, focus on the what, not the how. It, it's, it, you know, um, my lovely bride has this um, example. <laughs> it's like, um, Hey, uh, you you need to uh, you need to uh, get to France tomorrow. Oh, uh, okay. I I don't think so. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so your dear friend now is in the hospital right now, and I don't know if they're gonna make it, and they're in Paris. You need to get to the Paris tomorrow. It's like suddenly it's like, okay, you know, there is there's something about this level of of you know nothing is impossible once you decide it is not impossible once you choose this i choose once you choose this or the i can thing that you're talking mm -hmm. about um then suddenly the the levers and the gears start moving and so when we find ourselves in in this kind of weird little world that we're in. Um, one of the things I, I think I was telling you about is I really feel like we're in this world of impossibility right now. <laughs> and, and, and so, um, you know, what, what, what seems to be monumental distances, I think is actually like this now. Um, because who would have ever thought um, in, I don't know, when we're all going, ooh, it's the Roaring Twenties, 2020, woo-hoo, <laughs> you know, who would have ever have thought, um, hey, guess what, you know what, in about three months, you're going to be wearing a mask full time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and yeah. so there, 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 there's all this stuff happening now that, that I think suddenly is like, whoa, what the heck? And not, not to, I'm going to steer clear of politics, but I'm still <laughs> sure. going to bring up the current um, leader of the United States. <laughs> sure. But I think this has been going on for a yeah. while because realistically speaking, even his biggest supporters would say this, he has no background in leading a country prior to this. Um, so how does one get from business person slash reality TV host to most powerful person in the United States? There's this level, there's this, we're in this weird little world right now where 
you can, <laughs> I can, I can, this is happening now. So I think what's going to be kind of cool about this whole pandemic thing is you're going to see some folks who have utilized this time period really focusing on I can, and you're going to see a whole bunch of folks who's like, well, I'm going to watch a whole bunch of Netflix. Yeah. And then you're going to see a whole bunch of folks that maybe are meditating in the ints right now. Um, and um, so you, or, and then as we're seeing currently happening now in uh, late, late June, almost July, you're seeing a whole bunch of people trying to live the old normal. That's right. And, and they're getting sick. I get yeah. to go and, back. I get to go yeah. back now to what I used to have and they're getting sick. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think there has been this paradigm shift. I think we're in a new space. Um, I think those who are excited and utilizing this time period are really utilizing this small little gap that we have. We'll see. I don't know. What is it about this time period? I mean, I definitely, I feel what you're talking about, but I'm trying to get a grip on what, you know, what, is it? I, I definitely felt that s there was some seismic shift going on. It f I felt like, I um, mentioned this maybe last time, almost like there was an earthquake when this first started to happen. And I was feeling that sort of disorientation, dizziness. And one of the people I worked with, it was like, yeah, we went through this wormhole and we are, we are, you know, light years from where we were somehow. Um, what is it about it? Is it just that, that, that there's this big shift in it just, everybody's thrown into this other way of, or, or you know, what is it? Because I, I always feel so limited. I mean, there's so much I don't know about, you know, quantum physics and quantum mechanics. I, I don't know. And so I just know what I feel and I know what I see. But Scott, what do you think it is about this time? Because um, um, it is kind of magic in some ways. There is a... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start saying some things. Uh, I, I was going to say it, and then I thought to myself, don't say it. And then I said, oh, you just said an int. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I also said you shouldn't say that. And you, you know, so I, I'm going to say some stuff. So again, okay, I've been kind of working with this energy person. And yeah. so what I'm saying is essentially repeating her, but I, I, I see evidence to this and it's going to sound really weird. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people out there watching this going, Ooh, I want to, so, hear um, one of the things that she had talked about is that A certain time period ago, uh, three, four, five years ago, I don't know, uh, two okay. years, maybe. I found this on the web for what time period again? Th that would be Siri. Yes. Hey, Siri, guess what? Let's not talk. <laughs> I think that is, that, is, that is a yes to that. We want to all yes. hear this. Yes. Steve Jobs wants to hear this. We want to yeah. hear this. Yes. I know. Everybody. I know. Um, fun. <laughs> and so she had talked about... Um, the level of vibration and light energy has elevated. Um, if you want to get really 1960s, you can call this the age of Aquarius. I don't really know. I'm sure there's a lot of different words for this. Yeah. But what she was essentially saying is that there's, there's more vibrational light hitting and radiating throughout the world now. And so structures and people that have existed in a lower vibrational energy no longer fit in this world. And stuff that has been going on for an enormous amount of time um, now is being exposed. So you're starting to see um, lots of headlines about this kind of stuff. FIFA, soccer, the you know international olympic committee all the the, the corruption happening there mm -hmm. um the me too movement you know uh black lives matter all this um stuff where like you know this me too the the the, the black lives matter thing it's it's fascinating uh, just three years ago um it couldn't get off the ground i mean it was just it, it the the conditions have not changed any. It's just that they, they 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 brought light to it and everyone's like, no, 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 no. And now it's like there's more light and we can see this. And I don't know mm -hmm. what it is about the current atrocities that are happening 
that people are now going, oh my gosh, I now see it. Yeah. Because they were still happening back then. People still had cell phones. They were still recording this stuff. Yeah. But somehow now this is being seen. And it's causing people to, I think, reflect, are these the stories that I choose to embody now? Or do I choose to embody a different story? And so that's what I think, for lack of a better word, on an energetic spiritual level, what COVID is, is it is kind of this quickening that's happening. It's coming in the form of a virus and it is unfortunately, and I don't mean to, I, it's, it's, it's coming at great um, emotional and personal and cost to people. Yeah. Um, and so I am by no means, when I say this is a energetic quickening, I, I am not trying to diminish the level of suffering that's happening and the, the amount of enormous work that the healthcare providers and the, <laughs> the parents who are trying to, you know, have their kids be at home while they're trying to work. I mean, there's an enormous amount of suffering happening right now, but yeah. there is something about from a more distance perspective what pain and suffering acute pain and suffering how that can cause someone to examine their world and say is this something that i choose to continue yeah. or do i choose to make a change and so i think covid 19 is a quickening agent i, I i'm real. thank you for saying that and i i thought what you said um, it, that didn't go to what people call sort of, some people call it as woo. I, no, this is like, I feel this. This is the realm that we've been working in. Eugene, um, Eugene and I have uh, gotten a sort of the, the PAA Asia where we're connecting with an incredible level of talent in Japan. And Eugene, I mean, I, I'm, 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 I imagine you, you know, you feel that too. I mean, you've been a part of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... It's this whole thing is, and it what you just said completely makes sense to me, and it's you know I mean, I'm no expert in anything, <laughs> but it's something that me we either. can feel you know it's like you know there's so many people that are just doing their you know Netflix whatever watching whatever you mm -hmm. have people that are really trying to create something because it's now, um, and, and then you have all these people that. But the, like what I'm feeling right now is like the energy is different from mm -hmm. everybody, like the whole and everybody. Like if you go to a supermarket to buy something, the whole energy of people is, it feels completely different. Yeah. It feels raw um, in many ways. You'll have some people that are like, no, don't even get close to me at all. Stay at least mm -hmm. twenty feet away. <laughs> but it's like. But this whole thing about do, do, trying to do something, or I'll see my friends in Zoom meetings with, you know, in a different, completely different business, but they're talking about things and this and this and this. And then you'll have these producers having meetings about when to restart shooting, um, but they have no clue. But they need to do something. So they're just talking about n nothing, <laughs> really. But it's like, but you but you actually have people that are really constructive and trying to get really you know things going and then in like japan right now things have started up again mm -hmm. so and luckily the COVID's not as you know not as much as here so you, i mean it's like really low compared to the numbers here sure. but so it's, everything's going up but you have these actors rehearsing with these masks and the masks and you have that shield and the mask and then you know, it, and then I'm asking them how it's like, and they're like, mm. "No, it's different." But it's it's um, some actors said that the time they take everything off and they do act, um, it's it's more precious in a way. Mm -hmm. Like they they take care of it more, if that makes any sense. Like yeah. they have one one chance to do it, so they will really yeah. like concentrate and. I'm like wow, but that's how it should be usually. But <laughs> it's like, but but what what we're doing with PA Asia, it's it's bringing up a lot of, um, it's 
bringing out a lot of stuff from Japan. A bunch of actors mm. are really, really. I mean, it's completely new to them in many ways, and it to some of them that that have experienced, you know, acting in different countries, different films in various countries and whatever. They've experienced the culture differences, and you know, the the way actors attack a certain role or you know things like that. It's all different, but a few of them, they're you know, they're, it's refreshing themselves up and at the same time they want to start you know really creating more stuff which is really good because everybody's it's just tremendous energy right now with yeah with yeah. people around me definitely it's just like so much energy in a positive way which is great mm -hmm. nice nice i was going to say something i um i forgot um Oh yeah, well, my friend Nori Victoria. <laughs> she's an act, actor, uh, actress, writer, producer uh, on the board of New Filmmakers LA, and was talking about how it's an interesting time, like to 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 be adaptive as an actor. She's like, what I really don't get, like, do actors really want to go back to like, you know, there's so much, uh, there's so much a part of that for newer actors that's just really not fun and kind of sucky and like. You know, it's like, why do we do what we do? Don't we do this to, um, you know, to, to have this emotional impact on other people? And, and, and um, so just talking about sort of what is it that makes people want to just go back and do things the, the, the way that they were? Um, Scott, you were talking a little bit about production coming back up. Um, have you been on a set? since covid like have you been on a set recently and what was that like was it better is it was it just crazy or what we were talking a little bit about it last time um so no um i was fortunate enough to be on set as la was shutting down hour by hour so that last week that everything was open in la i was shooting general hospital Mm -hmm. And speaking of precious, uh, it, was, it was interesting what you were talking about, but it's like, yeah, you get one take. <laughs> one rehearsal, one take, and move on. So they shoot like two or three episodes a day. A day. Um, so um, I, it's interesting that you talk about how precious that one take is because it's like, oh, basically it's staged then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's, you're, you're a little bit more embodied and present, I'm guessing, uh, um, very um, zen when you're actually doing your work. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of really fascinating. I have not been on a set since then, um, so I have no idea. I'm ho yeah. hoping to get back onto ABC's sets whenever they just choose to open up. They're, they're, I was hopeful for July, uh, seeing how Cal California's rates are going. <laughs> I'm not hopeful for July. <laughs> I'm now thinking yeah. Yeah. September. Um, so it should be yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, because I think there was initially some hope that uh, they would be able to fire up in Georgia, and Georgia's now going up pretty, pretty high. So yeah. um, who knows? Um, I don't know what it is about to answer your question, the, the desire to go back, except for I think it falls under this um, belief system of control. Um, I, I, and, you know, I'm now remembering where I was going before I lost track um, a, a bit, but it's like there is something to be said about improv training and the yes and. Uh, aspect of things, as well as the fact that when you walk on s set or on stage, excuse me, when you, in improv, it is it is the ultimate trust exercise because you're just walking out there with a whole bunch of people. Then it's like, okay, here we go. Uh, some, some suggestion: Rutabaga, great uh, place you want to go vacation. Mars, Rutabaga, and Mars. Okay, here we go. Woo! Yeah. You know, and and so <laughs> there is something I think to be said, man. I think we, we all should go under improv training right now. Though I think we're doing that right now. It's called COVID nineteen. Yeah, forced um, improv training. Yeah. Yeah, and and so I think that the, the the we love the idea of control, 
We love the idea somehow that this is all going to be okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And um, I, I've always kind of been fascinated by the concept of fear of death. And um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, maybe I, I'm odd this way. I have really no fear of death. I have a fear of the dying process. That's something... You know, I, I'm yeah. hoping it. Ha I hope it just you know, <laughs> a meteor just hits me, yeah. or you know, I just yeah, you know, massive heart attack when I'm asleep. You know, the dying process I can kind of do without. Yeah. Uh, but the death is like, you know, <laughs> you, the minute you come into this planet, that's the one thing that's guaranteed. Right. And 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 you know, I don't know how many billions, trillions of people have gone through this prior, so it's like, uh, it, it happens. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of this desire for control is also about this desire to try to put off what is going to be ultimately inevitable. Um, and so that's why people want to go back to, I think, what they know best. And I think that's the reason why some people actually hang on to stories yeah. is because, well, it's scarier to think about, I can. It's yeah. it's somewhat comforting. I've lived 34 years on this planet with, I can't. I know the result. I know what I'm gonna get. I may not be happy about this, but I know the result. Whereas if I say I can, it's like, oh, oh wow. What does that mean? That's really <laughs> scary. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, I think the COVID is sort of like death is this thing that you can kind of put off sometimes if you're not sick, luckily, hopefully. And you can put it off and it's this thing that's not. But now it's sort of like it's like it's like this real possibility for everybody right now. So yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, um, I was just thinking about something you were talking about a little earlier, Scott. I, I um, in my learnings and hearing the people that I like and respect speak, there's two schools of thought that come up about this. One is that awareness and consciousness um, is born and dies with the body. And then awareness and consciousness is infinite and is, is the thing that uh, is eternal and infinite and doesn't. And I, so interesting enough, some, some, the, because of the course of events last year, I had a, for lack of a better I don't know, term some type of spiritual awakening last year where I also um, do not have a fear of death, um, a different sense of knowing about what might what that might be without. But yes, the dying process, of course, is is stressful. But I, I kind of feel like <laughs> awareness and consciousness is this infinite thing. I, I had this really interesting. Um, I met a guy named Leon Logo Thetis, who is the creator of a show called The Kindness Diaries. It's Amazon, Netflix, and he goes around the world relying nothing um, but the kindness of strangers for food, shelter, clothing, transportation, and goes travels the world on a little yellow motorbike. And I was, um, funnily enough, uh, at a place where I was in a sauna, okay? Yeah, yeah. And Leon comes in with a friend of his. I didn't know who he was. And they're coming in. They walk into this sauna. He's this British guy. And, and he, he starts talking to me. I, I, in, a, in a sauna, I don't necessarily feel like talking, but I was down for it because I was in a meditative place. And he said, I want to know. My friend and I have been talking. What the fuck happened before the Big Bang? There was the Big Bang and what happened before? And I, you know, it was so beautiful because I was on... I was thinking about this kind of stuff before he walked in. So it was the synchronicity. A lot of synchronicity events happened last year. And I said, I think there's was awareness and consciousness. It seems like awareness and consciousness was before the Big Bang. So anyway, I, I don't know if I would say I take a great deal of pleasure in, but it's very calming and it gets me to breathe a little bit and thinking about death and dying to think that what if... It could be a terrifying thought too, but what if our awareness and our consciousness, not with regards to objects, but just our awakeness, what if that is, has always been and always will be infinite and eternal? Um, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> it's like...
some heavy stuff. Well, well, but we, we, we can go really deep here. Um, what do you think? I, you know, I, I think Einstein was, for me, one of the greats. I, yeah, 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 well. But, you know, he, I think he proved everything is one, we're all one, uh, with E equals MC squared. Everything's energy. So if you, you boil everything down to everything, it's energy. It, you know, I think there's this uh, current thought process that if, if you're honestly to take, you know, I don't know, I'm just choosing things on my desk right now. It's like, th this is largely just open space. I mean, what the actual so-called matter in here is, is infinitesimal. In fact, if you take the entire planet and you com compress all the space out of it, into actual just what is the actual matter there it's it's smaller than it can fit on the you know on, on the very tippy tippy top of a, of a pin um, so most of of what we say is is real is not <laughs> there it's 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 an idea it's a construct um, it's energy so and what is thought but energy um, so you know the one thing that um, we have control of is thought and so that's how we start creating our world as far as the fear of death is is it infinite is it not infinite well I, I think again I always go back to Einstein e equals MC squared everything is energy <laughs> there is energy before there's energy after it yeah. changes vibrations, it changes <clears throat> maybe form factor, but it still just is. It, it, it's, it is the definition of the, the verb to be. It just is. Yeah. And it's all everything. So, um, you know, what happened before the Big Bang? I, I have this really weird theory that I think... <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go down to the deep thing here. I have this idea that it's like, okay, we're gonna do a little math lesson here. Cool. All okay, right. so, awesome. um, yeah. so you know, one, one thing that we learned in geometry is a point has zero width whatsoever. So you, know, you could you could have one point and you could have like a hundred million points touching each other and you still are down to like zero. And so, you know, so how do you get a line? You know, you have an infinite number of points. Okay, great. So we have, we have a point, now we have an infinite number of points, and now we have a line that just stretches forever. So then how do we get a plane? Well, you know, you, you stack a whole bunch of lines together and there's still just one line, so you need an infinite number of lines to, before you get a plane. It just stretches infinitely in all these directions in one plane. Well, then how do you get space? Well, you get all these planes together and, you know, a lot of data dice. So you need an infinite number of planes before you get what we call space. So what has more? Space, a plane, a line, or a point? What has more points? It's all infinite. Yeah. So we start, we start really going down that little rabbit hole there. It's like, well, you obviously understand that space has more. <laughs> Does it really? Can, mm -hmm. can there be different number of infinites? So the idea that I have, and when you talk about all the great wisdom out there in the world, and, and, and the, the need to be present, the need to be embodied, the need to be fully here, mm -hmm. always focuses around breath. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And when you start taking a look at the patterns in the world, sine waves and stuff like that, it's up and down. It's this, it's these yeah. different polarity planes of light and dark and you know, zero and one and all this stuff. So what if, just thinking, what if there are an infinite number of these kind of realities out there, all kind of sandwiched like a Russian doll within each other. And so what if what we call our universe is nothing more than inhale, exhale? So what happened before the Big Bang? What, what if it was 
compressing down. What if we're just in this continuous little inhale, exhale mm. routine here? Mm. What if we, what mm. if our existence is quite truthfully the lungs of a flea right now? <laughs> you say the, do you say the lungs of a flea? Lo, flea, a little, a little flea. Oh, like a little flea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Buzzing around. Yeah. You know, and it's just breathing in and out. So what we consider this great big bang was instead this, this beginning of this inhale yeah. of a flea. Yeah. Because to me, it's like there's all of these patterns in our world. So just to say that nothing existed prior to that violates the whole concept of what energy is. Yeah. The idea of to be. So, so that's kind of where I start going with this as I'm starting to be very present. It's like, okay, breathe deep, breathe easy. And I'm just like thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just creating all these little big bangs right now. Over and over and over. Yeah. You know? And and so what all you know, this whole idea of like, oh my gosh, you know you know it, you know, what what am I gonna get my wife for her birthday and stuff like that? You start realizing it's really kind of minuscule. Yeah. In in, in the even in the context of how long the United States have has been in existence, which right. is like a, you know, when the Europeans, they go 240 odd years. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. When the, when the thousands. And so it's like, when you start thinking about all this, you start realizing it's all kind of meaningless. So we might as well choose to do what we, it's in our hearts content. And if that means, oh shoot, I missed my wife's anniversary gift, which I just wrote a little scene about. Um, <laughs> In a new piece or the piece you just put the period on? The piece on? I just put the period on. Okay. Um, was not my character. I just want to throw it out, out there. Um, not that it matters. Um, but yeah, it's what if, what if, our world, everything that we think is the be all and end all is we're just in the lungs of a flea somewhere. Yeah. And you know, what does a flea live? Um, I don't know, 14 days. So what we think to be this most amazing thing is our entire existence is indeed just less than 14 days. How's that for rabbit hole? Hey, um, wow. I'm just going on the ride. I think we people that might be That's watching awesome. might be reaching for a, I don't know what, <laughs> <laughs> reaching for something. You know, I, know. That, I think they're going, you know that cannabis, medical cannabis that he's, <laughs> Maybe. he's using to, for the symptoms? I think we're understanding stuff. Uh, so interesting. So two little points, something um, Steve Jobs talked about, uh, or people maybe talked about Steve Jobs and they mentioned this thing called a reality distortion field. It was just okay. somehow his will and his will for things to fit into what he thought they should be. And, it, and it, he would make it that. I, I was very fascinated by that. So I was trying to, this reality distortion, I think it, it relates to a lot of what we're talking about. Um, have you ever heard about that reality distortion field? No. Okay. I, 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 you know, I think I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever really looked it up. Yeah, it was, I think it was something that was a Steve Jobs specific thing, and and, um, and then there was that, and then I had a um, I had an experience of a of a head, in, head injury when I was a child. It's one of my earliest memories. I downstairs in the basement. I grew up in Boston, and um, I was just putting around downstairs, and I was standing up on a toilet, um, and I slipped and fell back and hit with the back of my head mm. on a porcelain sink and was knocked out, and the moment I was knocked out, and you know, it could be a dream or whatever, and it, it, it happened, I had a bump on my head, but I felt my awareness rising above, I actually was, it was that people that out of body type of experience, and I'm looking at my mm. sort of passed out little two year old, three year old self on the floor, but I'm just pure awareness, but just from a higher vantage point, and then all of a sudden, it just sort of came back into one, uh, one kind of a thing, and so, Again, who knows what effect that had on my head as a child. I mean, again, that's, yeah. I don't know what kind of, uh, anyway, it was just interesting. So I was thinking about that and I'm not imbuing it with anything that I don't Sure. Know. 
Um, to go a little bit down the rabbit hole again, um, speaking of childhood and kind of out of body experience stuff, um, I, I used to have, um, used to be very, very frustrated as a child. Um, I have not really told many people this, but it's like I, I used to be very angry to be so specific because I could remember lying in bed, I don't know, age six or so, and remembering what it was like to be infinite. Oh, wow. And, you know, this was before Star Wars. This is before the Chewbacca's and the you know, Jedi Knights and all the lightsabers and stuff like that. And, um, but truly remembering with clarity and detail far better than um, the, the special effects artists could ever render, just flying into stars and planets and being everywhere at the same time and just being so small, being so big, being so everywhere, mm -hmm. and being so angry that I had to be so very specific to be this Japanese-American kid in this tiny town in Colorado. And, and it's like, I, I did not want to be that specific. I wanted to be infinite again. And so I think for me, that's what kind of maybe cured me at a very young age of the concept of death is because it's like, yeah, it's okay. Everything's infinite. Yeah. Um, hopefully what you went through <laughs> um, has not had any like really lasting effects on you. Maybe you kind of went through a little bit of your little infinite little world at some level or form. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting when you start peeling back the layers of what we actually think is reality. And you start yeah. going, oh, huh, mm. that's kind of interesting. Um, thank, you for sh thank you for sharing this. I, I am very fascinated. One of my quests last year was to get a taste for the infinite because it was something that I had a taste when I was a child. It was mm. another earliest memory was lying in bed as a two, three, who knows, one, two, three, whatever. And I'm sort of um, going from myself and then somehow as I'm sort of roll, this image of sort of rolling the covers being unrolled by the covers, rolling out of bed and rolling down and then exploding into this sort of like almost electrical infinite. I, I have an image of what it felt like, but it was this all this little, elect, just like infinite electrical energy. And it was like ecstatic. It was the most mm -hmm. ecstatic thing I'd ever, and then coming back and then back and like the, the, the differentiation. And, um, and it was like- uh, uh, Sounds like it was similar. So, it, so, so similar. It was almost, I felt like in the 80s how when a screen went white at the end of the, you know, American, and it, I'm blanking on the name of it, but I felt like that. And, and it was, whoa, and I remember it being like ecstasy. And then I had a series of dreams and I called it to make it safer for me. I called it Snoopy's Big and Little Band. And I was being this terrified by the bigness of things and then the smallness of things, the specificity of things and then the bigness of things. And it was, a, it was a scary thing. And so I sort of named it Snoopy's Big and Little. But, um, but that experience of just, just all of a sudden, it was like a flip switching right into that light and then coming back. I just remember, um, it's interesting that your perspective of sort of being kind of bummed that you were so specific. I just remember the, um, the feeling of it. And the feeling was just pure electricity, pure light. And it was like, it was the most awesome thing. It was the most awesome thing ever. And, and it, it was, yeah, it's, for me, it's the definition of joy. Yeah, just pure and simple. Just joy, yeah. Yeah. And was that similar to, like, d d does that reminiscent of what you felt as well when you were? Oh, yeah, younger? yeah. It yeah. was just, and, but for me, it was like, I, I just wanted to be there all the time. Kind of maybe like Teo, you know, is, oh, she yeah. calls it a high. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah. Is, cool. and, and maybe maybe to a certain extent, I don't know. I've I've had a chance to I don't know read some stuff where somebody was trying to interpret maybe what I was going through, and it's like, you know, if indeed the the the, the we are in an endless cycle of rebirth, mm -hmm. you know, um, as a young child, you know, that's that's when you're closest to 
the moment before <laughs> from an actor's perspective. Yeah. And and so you 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 can potentially cross that barrier, that reality barrier and, and remember the time before. And so that's probably what was what was happening for us mm -hmm. um, as children as we were just remembering the moment before. I, I was older than year two or three. Um, so um, I think for me, I, I, I was very, very cognizant of what the reality was. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. it was, it was too small and too specific. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whereas I just wanted to be anything and everything. And I think to a large degree as while well growing up, that is why I was potentially resistant uh, about making choices or decisions as I just wanted to keep my options open because I loved being infinite. And I think to a large degree, maybe as adults, as well as teenagers and children, that is what we're pursuing. We're pursuing that, that feeling of sheer joy because it's, yeah. it's, our, it's our natural state. Take that. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. I was in that search for the infinite last year. I think I had a story of infinite and I was trying to wrap it around my idea of what that story was. And then I, at some point I let it go because I feel like I, um, in just sort of exploring and pushing into sort of like the nature of sort of my awareness and consciousness and the infiniteness of it, if I could really just let myself go and sort of pull back a little bit. I, I don't have the, I, I, I feel it, but yeah, it's so interesting is that I think there was, um, yeah, I, I think of infinite as a space in a linear type of, I thought of it in a linear type of way. It's just, it's just a long, it's a big, it's a big thing and it, it's not big or small. It's just pure joy, pure light, pure um, just everything. Um, yeah, I would, I would say not as like pure light, it's pure everything. Pure everything, hmm. yeah. yeah. I always get very frustrated at my um, father. My father, is, who's lovely and I love him a great deal, is a former psychiatrist and has been into non-duality. And, and he talks about it as, as nothingness, as nothingness. And I don't like that word nothingness. It's more of an ever. To me, it feels more of an everything than a nothing. Nothing feels like it could scare the shit out of somebody or it's like emptiness or nothing, you know? No thingness I can get my head around, but not nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. I think the last time we talked, we, we, we discussed, and again, I don't know what I'm talking about, um, but supposedly the, the goal um, is, uh, at least for the Buddhists, is nirvana, which is to extinguish, um, to end this endless cycle of rebirth. Yeah. And it, it, is, it is to, essentially, to not exist in if you were to maybe put it in a different understanding, maybe it is to not exist in this level of specificity. <laughs> um, it is to um, exist and just be um, without effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. does, it, does Nirvana mean to extinguish? Yeah. I didn't to know extinguish. that. Yeah. Most people think it's this heaven yeah. Um, but it actually means to extinguish, to put out the flame. The flame of what? To put out um, the flame that's, of life? To the specificity? That's, uh, that's that's where you start getting into the the wor world of. Yeah. Don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I, I like that. It's just we're we're so object focused. We're so thing focused. Oh man, we're just. I don't know what I'm talking about either. We're just going into this. Um, we're so thing focused. We're so. Well, I have so much fun with the acting work, especially as we do it like this too, is we're so thing focused, devices and objects and bottles and things. And the work that we do and the acting work that we do is, is not thing focused at all. There's no thing. We could do it in a dark room where you couldn't see. You're yeah. pulling magic and wonder out of your body using nothing but the power of the present moment and traveling. We, we, I, I, I swear it feels like I'm traveling. We are going through, time is changing, and we're, we're, we're on some type of journey as we do it. And um, 
it's not about eyes open. It's uh, things don't matter in that place. So it's it, yeah. Well, that's where I think, at least uh, for your students, for any acting student or whatnot, that's where this this world of manifestation um, can be somewhat second nature. Is <laughs> because your job is to imagine uh, yourself in these extraordinary situations. Yeah. Um, and to pretend. And that's something that is a skill set that we learn as kids. My gosh, we've got a nine month old puppy and it just wants to play and play and play. It's, it's kind of this natural <laughs> state of things. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so when you, when you talk about, hey, what would you, what would bring your, you to your, your, your greatest level of contentment? and and joy you know what 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 are the realities that you can you can i can create um you know it's like why not as an actor <laughs> it's like you know when you talk about living in that 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 future space well that's what actors are trained to do live in some other different future space yeah or maybe past a space if you are in a period piece but either either way it, that is your job is to create and imagine yourself there yeah. um so i would think um for trained actors this manifestation thing could come very second nature there's there's something interesting about when you um, you think of the I, I I think of like okay well we we we've, we've gotten to this specific sort of point in this existence and we're this infinite why would we for why would we seemingly forget what happened before is the forgetting part of the entering into this level of consciousness that we're in right now like a forgetting and so what I what I find very interesting is that sometimes to solve a scene or a problem on set or, or how to play the role once we've done all the work um then forgetting it actually forgetting it and going to some sort of alternate or opposite or upside down world or multiverse type of thing that often the actors will find the most brilliant choice they've ever found and sort of forgetting so i've been sort of fascinated by this process of putting something together putting it in your muscle body memory and then forgetting it in your head it's still somewhere, but when you forget it, that's how we're able to solve the problem from another level of consciousness sometimes with the acting. So um, I don't know, what would you think, uh, Eugene or Scott, about like the, I, the, the did, is it that we forgot where we originally came from? Is it intentional? Is it just part of the journey to be us that just, you can't, it, the dimensions are just too great. You just you can't totally wrap your, I, I kind of remember my, I mean, my, my dad's still alive, but um, he was a producer and mm. um, he used to produce, so he probably brought in the, the thought of music publishing into Japan when he was running MCA, the first, what, Japan office, I guess. Mm. And, then, um, and then he ended up producing this band called Godaigo. And then I was at, and I was like, well, "What is your job?" And he's like, "Produce." I'm like, "Okay, so what? What? What, what do producers do?" You produce a hit. That's what we're supposed to do. I'm like, "Okay, how do you produce a hit?" You know, I was like eight, nine, I think, at the time, and he named his company after my nickname called Jenica. Um, and he named it Jenica Music. So I started asking him all these questions, <laughs> you know, because he was like, you're the chairman. And I'm like eight or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, you know, when, when you start something, everybody comes in the beginning. And then it breaks off. It seems like everything's going to finish. But if your goal's up here, if you have your goal there, it'll break apart. But the guys that really want it to happen and that see that vision, they or whatever it is, they come back. And most of the time, a lot of people quit in the middle of everything. But when they come back, this is when the producing really starts. Is This is when you know this is gonna be a hit. And we, without even looking at the end result, you'll know it and you'll feel it. And it's something that kind of 
mm-hmm. what I feel when we're working on the acting as well. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, are you having fun? And when we, when when someone is having fun, we all know it. Yeah. And like, even though even though there's nothing, you know, I mean, act, we're just seeing things or feeling things, and but we're all feeling the fun of it. That is making us um, happy and energized and everything, even though there's no substance. But after a session, you feel, whoo, and it's not like we you know we're not making, we're not making a film or anything. We're just mm-hmm. like training right now. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything for a lot of people. It means so much to us, yeah, or the person that's actually going through the process. Um, but it's like you know, it, it breaks off, but something it'll keep coming back. And when things come back, yeah. you always have to, you always have to have you know a few people that know what they want mm-hmm. and and when it breaks off you know there might be a lot of hurt and pain and this and that but when it comes back together then it yeah. becomes something you couldn't imagine um, at all in the very beginning and that's probably what you're going to be doing in films and whatever and I was like okay so is that for everything I was like yeah but you know you have to plan it like with the with the band, you have to plan the the distribution, blah blah blah. So if you, and so I asked him a question when I was producing my film, and he was like, okay, and he wrote me this long letter, of, uh, like a three year plan. Of, <laughs> this is what you have to do, da, da, da. and then this part you're probably gonna go through pain because they're gonna all yell at you for doing something wrong, and blah blah blah. But just believe it and keep going, and then it'll it'll get to somewhere. Yeah. But it was always, it was, that was, so that's kind of my equation of, of success as well, is to just believe and go for it and be vulnerable and just keep going. And, um, I don't know why I got into this thing, but <laughs> this cool. well, it's, it's, it's kind of what your Joseph is talking about is, is you say you work it. So you put that out there, mm. that that's yeah. the goal. And then you talk about the, the process of just, it's, it's, you, you, you just, you're making a smorgasbord of stuff and some things fly off and then some things come back. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, I guess, kind of the Joseph's, you go into the you know, negative world or the opposite world or whatever it is. And then when everything then comes and coalesces, you, you create that. And I, it, the, another way of looking at that is, and why, why I said to you, Joseph, it's like, I, I think it's, 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 um, it's not just all light um, is because if everything was all light, then nothing would exist. Yeah. Um, you know, the very thing that creates definition is shadow. So if we don't acknowledge our shadows and embrace the shadows, the opposite world, yeah. um, nothing exists. Yeah, my dad was also he was always he was always explaining things as music which is math mm-hmm. that's all math. um you know it's all math and then but you know when i was like young and starting acting i had nothing i i didn't know about that or i didn't have that that angle to anything until he started saying okay you you start a song it takes you on a journey and you come back so you feel safe again and then you love it but if you like go on a journey and it ends with like fa and then you just like fade out, then it pisses you off because you're in the middle of the journey and you don't come home <laughs> or, or like, you know, like it's it's love or hate. It's black or white or it's, yeah. you know, it's all opposites. And it's, Shakespeare is like that as well. Yeah. But everything, it's it's all math. And then you graph that together, you get a melody and, then, you know, things like that. But he used to always kind of put everything into music and then explain to me everything with music. So there's the rhythm. So this script probably, you know, I saw your movie. I, I thought it was really stupid. I was like, okay, thank you very much. You know, the story might be good, but the rhythm, there's no there's no rhythm to that thing. The director had must, you know, be like da 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 and like walk off on his own. I'm like, yeah, no, he was treated that way on set. You know, but it was like, he would look at it in that way, which, Helped me figure a lot of things out, and like with everything, I think. I think there's a rhythm to to things, um, and it's it's one of the things. It's it's kind of how we understand the world. And I remember, you know, there, there's this concept of the hero's journey, and I forget how many 
specific beats there are in a hero's journey. I think there's like 12 specific beats. Um, and so, and I had a chance to kind of study under this one storyteller filmmaker and he said that he said that the, the difference between um, a, a, a romance and a tragedy is when you when you fade to credits and he says if you fade to credits uh, uh, after the wedding it's a romance if you fade to credits after the divorce it's, it's a tragedy but he said it, it's he, he says if you take a look at everyone's hmm. story there are all these 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 12 beats and so I think at a certain point, just kind of like this sine wave, inhale, exhale, we have this kind of hmm. stuff always happening. So depending on when I choose to start the story and end the story, I'll find 12 beats there. Yeah. And so he also said, if you ever watch a, 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 read a book, watch a film, see a TV show, whatever, see some level of story, and it seems janky, it's because I'm missing one of the beats or two of the beats. Mm. And that's maybe what your father was saying, is he was, yeah. th there's, a, there's a pattern and a rhythm and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, yeah, you, 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 missed, you missed the third. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you went to diminish sixth right there. Uh, that should have been a fifth, you know? And so at a certain point, I think he's like going, yeah, you're, it's, there's yeah. no rhythm. He would always, yeah, and take me to these jazz, jazz clubs. And me and my sister, uh, we were like, nine and she was six or seven or something we he he plays he plays the drums too so he's a rhythm guy but he would just be there for four hours which means we were we would have to be there for four hours to just watch and then he'll be like look you see that you see that out of the blue he'll be like he's got it <laughs> we like what the hell is he talking about but when we were looking at this one saxophone i still remember this one saxophone um lady player but she started playing this one song, and I don't know what it was, but it was like she was singing, not like playing an instrument. And my sister and I were like, whoa. And then he was like, ha, now you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, no, I still don't. But, <laughs> but I know it was awesome for some reason. But that's, that's kind of why, I, you know, when, when they, well, I guess what I was getting to with the whole idea of like what happened before the Big Bang, it's like, well, it is, yeah. the thing is, it just is. And so yeah. there's no big, there's no beginning, there's no end. There is just this rhythm. Yeah. And and so you know you take you start taking a look at all these. I think it's a B. There's there's a mathematical equation that is seen both in in the Nautilus shell as well as the human body. There's a certain proportion of things that you see everywhere. And so I think there is this natural rhythm. Mm -hmm. the vibration of the universe and you know when you see it and you feel it it's there and so when you see a musician and they are in sync with what is real and honest and truthful it radiates yeah. and it's yeah. almost magical yeah and so that's <clears throat> and, and, and again i think that is what we are all pursuing why we get up in the morning is to find that truth, that rhythm, that whatever it is, mm -hmm. yeah. that is joy. I'm going to have to correct Teo now. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Teo? Oh boy. We're not getting high. It's joy. And, and it was beautiful when you, you were saying it's not light. Um, it, 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 you said joy? It's joy uh, or, or or fun or it, 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 I, I would just say it's it, it's just everything it's, it's everything just, it's all because in that sort of electrical space where I was sort of switching back and forth between me and that electrical space it wasn't pure white it was like I said like on the TV screen there were it was it was black white it, it was it was it was it was everything it was mm -hmm. black and white electricity but it was like that snow on the screen in a way it was it was yeah. feeling that in a way yeah Wow. I have no idea what we've done, but... <laughs> but we did something. Yeah. Something happened. No, this was... Scott, this is great. We were Thank in the you. zone. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I'm so happy that... I, I love going to tell actors, like, you, you have a plan. Don't solve anything in your head. Discover it out loud. Discover it. Your words create your reality. And, you know, I put some questions down, but they're 
nothing compared to what we talked about. I mean, these, <laughs> quest, these questions are nothing. We're light years past that. Scott, thank you very much for thank you, thank you, for thank hanging you out with much. us, and making the time. Ah, <sighs> thank you guys for hanging out with us as well. Um, uh, welcome back, uh, and and we look forward to the next time we all get to hang out together. Eugene, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you very much. Scott, thank you very much. Adios. Thank you. Yeah.